I made a fully functioning Grand Theft Auto clone in one week for free. This project has been on my mind for a really long time, but two weeks ago, during a Friday afternoon, I thought, yeah, I can probably do it pretty easily. And boy, was I wrong. I mean, my computer's GPU is over a decade old and isn't even compatible with Blender. Plus, very few people have ever done anything like this in Godot before, so I had to pave my own path. But I'm a persistent person, and I was sure I could do it. First, I started off with the map. I downloaded the model and imported it into Blender. But hold on a second, Teenage Code. I thought you said you couldn't use Blender, you may ask. And yeah, that's what I thought too. But by some miracle, my GPU has just enough support with Blender to do some basic functionalities, but not very well. So in addition to all my other limitations, I had to make this game really, really performant and with some interesting graphics choices. So I retextured all the buildings to just be a colored version of a public domain concrete texture I found. It doesn't look great, but it doesn't look bad either. To make up for the crappy graphics, I added in lots of details to make it feel a little bit more lively, like the random streetlights and the benches. Next, I needed a player to navigate the map, but there's one problem with that. I am horrible at vector math, so instead of programming anything myself, I just took some code from this tutorial to get a third person character up and running. I made a GTA clone a year ago, and everybody always asks me how I get the characters to move around the map. The truth is that there isn't any actual pathfinding logic going on whatsoever. Instead, I have a bunch of pre-planned positions that I want the NPCs to travel to, and they just move back and forth between each one. But in this game, I wanted something more. <laughs> I'm just kidding. When you have a week to do something, you begin to just not care so much. So I implemented the same logic as last year. Nobody wants to shoot a plain white bean, so I hunted for a human model I could replace it with. I made the walking animation, which isn't really all that great, but hey, it is what it is. Additionally, I wanted there to be some racial diversity, so I inverted the skin colors and voila, I had white and black NPCs, which obviously isn't all of the racial diversities, but it's better than nothing. I was really enjoying the idea of the game taking place in a sunset setting. Unfortunately, this meant that the players weren't showing very well, so you'll see the environment changing all throughout this video in an attempt to fix that. All I had left to do with the NPCs is integrate their models with the game, which should be pretty easy. Eventually though, I did get it to work really well. My PC can easily handle 50 NPCs and will continue to function well beyond 100 of them. Somebody in class told me that my GTA clone looks kind of like Vice City and I agreed. So I went with it and made things with Vice City in mind from here on. I made these opening and death animations, except there was a major lag problem destroying my game. Godot was telling me that there was memory leaks and the game was practically unplayable. Playable. I was running out of hope. I couldn't fix these problems because I had other core functionalities to worry about, so I added in a somewhat fake loading screen to make the absurd loading and lagging feel almost a bit more justified. These NPCs are great and all, but there's one problem. I wanted to kill them. So I found this gun pack and got to work implementing some functionality to the guns. This alone took me like three days. I imagine that when I release this to itch.io, people are just going to play it for a few minutes and want to blow stuff up, so I made sure to make the guns somewhat decent. I took a few days off from the game because of life and school and work and stuff, and when I returned, it had already been a full week since I had started the project. So did I cheat? Yeah. Anyways, I came back to it with a fresh mindset and got to work on some core mechanics. I got all the guns working, NPC death animations, and fixed the lag that was making my game unplayable. But a new problem was starting to emerge. After writing so much spaghetti code and patching up some serious design flaws with quick fixes, working on the game was becoming a mess. Code that I didn't remember writing was just showing up everywhere. Additionally, I only had two days left. The only way to continue working on the game was to create even more garbage code or redo the entire game design. You can probably imagine which option I went with. 
The game's functionality was finished. I just needed to string everything together with some UI and other enticing mechanics. I got to work on building a phone UI that would allow the player to complete missions for money and then use money to unlock the guns so that they weren't all there at the same time. The intention is to have people play the game for at least a little while, and I hope that by limiting playability with the promise of unlocking more as a reward for playing should help with that. I got the UI looking somewhat nice and resemblant of Vice City, but the time was running short. It was my last day, and I was realizing that I was going to have to cut some features. The save function that I copied from one of my previous games wasn't working right, so the data probably isn't getting saved correctly, and that means I can't have customizable keybinds because they aren't getting saved anyways. I also couldn't add in drivable cars just because of the lack of time and experience in that area. And the minimap? I just downright forgot about it. This is a real picture of my desk. I simply can't remember everything while on a time crunch. At 11.20pm Monday, I wrote the final line of code connecting the credit screen to the rest of the game. I woke up the next day and started uploading it to itch. When I ran into a new problem, I couldn't upload it as an HTML5 browser game because one of the file sizes was too large. It exceeded itch's max cap by 50 megabytes. <sighs> I opened the project back up and started tearing out random files, but that only got it down 20 megabytes. Then I discovered that with a little work, I can optimize the export for file size and not speed. So I got to work with downloading- Wait, a new realization hit me. I need to work on this video. I don't have time to try and export this game the way I want if I'm going to get this video out in time. It will be out for Windows if you want to play it, but I don't actually know if I will be able to get a browser version up and running by the time this video is released. This brings me to my conclusion, where I reveal the big secret. How do I and so many other game developers make games like this in an absurd time frame? Well. We cut corners and use our resources. You'll notice that a lot of these other GTA videos don't feature large stories or precise details that get you to play longer. They just cut to the core mechanics and that's it. Adding in professional polish takes, well, a team of professionals. Literally anybody, including you, the viewer of this video, can make games like this. All you have to do is use assets from other developers and string everything together in code. For example, you can download a gun model, a shooting sound effect, textures to change how the gun looks, and then watch a YouTube video on the best way to implement the gun into your game. It's almost like you can go from working on a game to being the manager of a team, comprised of freelancers developing assets who don't actually know that they're working for you. It's great to see how we have come so far in making video games that any programmer can make pseudo AAA games in mere weeks. If you have the basics of game development down, I encourage you to push yourself to recreate some of your favorite games using the strategies I have talked about. Who knows, it could be really fun. I sure know I had fun making this game, and if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like or subscribe. If you have any specific technical questions on how this game works, then just leave a comment and I'll answer it.